Bom dia e bem-vindo ao meu canal! Tudo joia? Hoje vamos falar de português, otherwise formerly known as Portuguese, Spicy Spanish, Brazilian or Mozambican. This is the fifth episode of Language Review, a series where I go through the languages of the world and review them, sort of like a film critic or a video game reviewer but for languages, specifically from the perspective of a language learner. I'll discuss who speaks them, their grammar, their difficulty, and tons of other stuff before finally giving them an official Language Simp certified rating on the Simp scale. If you enjoy this video, let me know in the comments which language would you like me to review next and without further ado vamos la why would I learn Portuguese when I could just learn Spanish? They're like the same language. Não é verdade, para com isso. This might start World War III and four in the comments, but in the same way that Ronaldo is better than Messi, Portuguese is better than Spanish. You should study Portuguese because it's really spicy and learning it will unlock tons of DLC as there are 260 million NPCs who speak it on five continents. But when you think of who speaks Portuguese, there is really one giant and beautiful country with the coolest flag in the world that immediately comes to mind, and I think you all know which country I'm talking about. Mozambique. Portuguese is pretty common in Africa, and not just in Mozambique. It's also spoken in Guinea-Bissau, Angola, Equatorial Guinea, and on a few teeny-weeny little islands that I couldn't name to save my life. But did you know that Portuguese is also an official language of communist China? I'm not even trolling. It's spoken in the Chinese special administrative region of Macau, or as I like to call it, communist casino island. Sadly, port speakers there are rapidly dying off, and there will soon be more casinos there than lusophones. Oh. Lucifone, that's the linguistic term for someone who speaks Portuguese for some reason. But really, when we think of this language, one incredibly influential and powerful country with rich history and kind people really does come to the top of all of our minds. Portia, wait, what is that big blob sticking out of Mexico? Okay, isso. <gasps> e Brasil, o país mais bonito do mundo. God, I love Brazil so much. Oh, and I, I guess some people also speak it in Portugal. Why is Portuguese spoken in all these different places? I don't get it. Well, it all starts at the Big Bang, but I'll give you the short version. So the Roman Empire happened and they spread the Latin language over to the Iberian Peninsula. Then Spain and Portugal somehow split like an egg. Latin evolved like a Pokemon into Portuguese. Then a bunch of colonizers got on boats and did some questionable things in South America, Africa, and Asia. Some time passed, Bolsonaro got elected, and now you have modern Portuguese. But modern Portuguese is very different depending on where you go. If you're ever on a layover in Portugal, you'll notice that the people there speak speak fast with a very closed mouth, like <clears throat> It's like they have a gerbile or a Portuguese man-o-war jellyfish thingy in their mouth. Some of the language overlords even claim that European Portuguese sounds a lot like Russian, but as a speaker of both of those languages, I just don't see it. But caralho, mano, Brazilian Portuguese is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. When I hear a Brazilian speak, it feels like I'm teleported to the top of Christ the Redeemer, and a bunch of tiny capybara angels grab me and fly me into the clouds and serve me unlimited feijoada until I explode and release green and yellow confetti onto the streets of Rio de Janeiro. There are a ton of regional accents in Brazil, but in general, Brazilian Portuguese sounds open, expressive, sometimes goofy, and just downright adorable. They sound like Oi, irmão, eu falo português do Brasil, brigadão! I'm a certified simp for the noises they make with their mouths, and I plan on permanently moving to a favela soon for full immersion to master the language and shama shock people on camera. Don't worry though, I won't go get killed or robbed. Y'all probably know that I got robbed last year in Baguette Land and recently in the United States, and as if real life robbery wasn't enough, the same day, coincidentally, criminals were also trying to gain access to my bank account logins. To say it's been an unsettled few days is an understatement, and I have no idea how they got my information. It's just really a shame how monolingual betas and large corporations can so easily buy and sell our personal data online these days. That's why I trust the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Buying and selling our personal information is big business. Something like signing up for a store's loyalty program can unknowingly put your name, address, social security number, and more into the hands of data brokers who sell their list to the highest bidder over and over again. Incogni searches for your information 
information and on your behalf, sends data brokers legal notices to delete your personal information from their databases. If you tried to do this with all the data brokers in the universe, it would take you years, but Incogni can do all the messy work for you. I only signed up a week ago and they've already completely removed my data from 28 different brokers and they're in the process of removing it from over 100 more. I've already noticed a dramatic reduction in the amount of spam emails I've received in both my personal Joshua inboxes and my business inboxes. If you'd like to see the magic in action yourself, use code LANGUAGESIMP at the link below to get an exclusive 60% off of an annual Incogni plan. Or go to my link, incogni.com slash LANGUAGESIMP now and use the code LANGUAGESIMP to get this special deal and take your personal data off the market today. Now let's talk about the alphabet. For the longest time, Portuguese was written in a discount version of the American alphabet with 23 letters instead of the naturally occurring 26 found in nature. However, in the late 2000s, the language overlords dropped new DLC into Portuguese, officially introducing the missing K, W, and Y into the alphabet, effectively copying us and making it the same as our system. That's a crazy precedent to set. Adding new letters to a lingo? Come on, Lulin, whoever the dictator or king of Portuguese Portugal or whatever is, y'all need the multi-ocular O. Replace all your vowels with the O with 10 I's and tourism will increase exponentially. Portuguese uses a bunch of basic accent markers that are pretty standard in Romance languages, but they also have the same iconic unibrow that Spanish has. But in Spanish, the unibrow only goes on the N, while in Portuguese, the unibrow is biromantic and can be found snuggling on top of both the A and the O. And these unibrows, combined with the rest of the letters, make Brazilian sound so good that my legs shake and my jacked arms twitch when I hear it. Most of the alphabet is pronounced how you'd think it is, but some of the letters have gone spring break hog wild. The R is very often pronounced as an H, like in the word cajo. I grew up with a Brazilian named Lohan, and my little pea brain at the time could not comprehend why we weren't calling him Lauren. The L is also quirky because it's often pronounced as a W, like in the word legal. Well, it looks like it should be pronounced legal, but it's actually legal. Another example is Brazil. However, the cutest noises by far that come out of Brazilians is the way that they pronounce the D-E at the end of words, like in onji, verdade, saúde, GGG. It just makes me feel warm and tingly. And they don't make that noise in Portugal. Instead, they make silly noises like pronouncing S's at the end of words as an SH sound. So they say português instead of português. Wow, so cool, SMH my head. The language also has a ton of nasal sounds. It's like French phonology and Spanish vocab met on Tinder, produced an offspring and named him João. And you're thrown right into it from the very beginning. Say goodbye to the simple Spanish C si, and say hello to the elegant and sophisticated sim. I'd explain how to make that noise, but after years of speaking baguette surrender protest language, it's just something I do automatically. In total, there are a dozen nasal sounds represented by the unibrowed O and A, as well as a bunch of letter pairs. So if you want to learn port, get ready to make a lot of um, 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 and um noises. They sound sus in isolation, but in normal words, I promise they're enchanting. Speaking of words, Portuguese vocab is super based and sigma-pilled. Over 90% of Portuguese words have a Spanish counterfeit version. Mexico just straight up stole most of them, like the words for food, ugly, and life, while other ones were just photoshopped or AI generated to look a little different, like eyes, city, and dark. The Spanish muy is so boring, but I'm overwhelmed with testosterone and estrogen when I say muito. And that's why I call Portuguese spicy Spanish. It's like they took the Spanish words and just dumped a gallon of Carolina Reaper hot sauce on them. Sometimes Portuguese can get a little unhinged though. Like they use numbers to denote the days. Monday is literally called second market. Tuesday is third market, and so on until they break the convention for Saturday and Sunday. But this is so confusing to me because Monday is called the second one? There's no first one? And why are they calling them markets? But hands down, my favorite thing about this language is the way they say the names of social media apps. Snapchat becomes a snappy chat ya. Instagram is Instagram, but the best is Facebooky. If I were the Zuck, I would move the Facebooky headquarters to Minas Gerais. Also on Brazilian social media, you'll notice that they virtually laugh very differently than the rest of the world. Instead of the default ha 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 or ja 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 ja, they just spam the letter K like absolute mad lads. The spice and quirked up energy spreads to other parts of the language as well. The definite articles, and for noobs that means the word the, are O and A, which are very confusing to my big American brain 
complete since we use the word ah as an indefinite article. So when I see a menina written, my brain thinks that I'm reading a girl and it takes a while for my Brazilian soul to catch up and understand it as the girl. There are also quite a few conjugations and each verb has over 50 different forms as a result, but don't worry. They are pretty regular minus the most common and important ones like to be, to go, to come, and to see. Feel your that there are a bajillion contractions similar to French, 74 in total if I'm counting them correctly, but you'll get used to them over time. Eu juro pela vida do Bolsonaro. The subject pronouns are especially gnarly. I love how I is eu, which sounds like how we express disgust here in Freedom Land. The word for you is você, which just has a certain elegance to it. It's even better than the Russian tui. And finally, to say we, they usually use the expression a gente, which literally means the people. And I think that brings a happy, collectivist, and communist feel to the language. No wonder it's spoken on Bing Chilling Casino Island. Now it's time to talk about shock factor. How will Portuguese speakers react to you speaking their language? Well, the truth is, not a lot of foreigners learn port. Brazil is swallowed both geographically and linguistically by Mexican-speaking countries, as well as Fishanese-speaking fish. So when someone starts learning, Portuguese, especially in American, that means they firmly resisted the strong propaganda pushing us to learn Mexican, and they instead chose to narrow in on Brazil for one reason or another. So they're grateful, even if you only know a little bit, and they will absolutely tolerate any mistakes even if they're drastic, like saying um pau instead of um pão. I can promise you that if you go to Brazil and you whip out even a half-broken sentence in port, they will do backflips, make you way more feijoada than you can eat, and even let you pet their capybaras. Oh, and if you don't know Know what to say to a Brazilian, just look them in the eyes and say, O Bolsonaro é muito gostoso, and I can promise you, you'll at least provoke some sort of reaction. When I was an engineer, I said that line to my boss's boss and my boss's boss's wife, who are both from Brazil, and they hated it. So now it's time to give Portuguese an official language simp certified rating on the simp scale. On a scale of dog water to gigachad, I place Portuguese confidently and securely in the Gigachad tier. There's just something about it, man. It's gorgeous, it's often silly yet academic when it needs to be, it's not a difficult language, Brazilians are wonderful and kind, Portugal exists, and it's just a ton of fun to learn. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting me on Patreon where I make language learning tips and tricks videos, and maybe give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. Let me know which language I should review next, and never forget, 7-1.